on today's episode, we're going to go ahead and try to change these rear brakes on this 1981 Yamaha XB750 Virago. Let's go. Okay, everybody so like I said we are going to try to change these brakes uh, apologize ahead of time you, there's nothing wrong with your monitor I am really this red went out to the beach uh, and I got pretty burned um, but some tools that you will need for this and let me preface this by saying I haven't really done this before uh, I've changed disc brakes a whole lot not drum brakes uh, so we're going to find out together how this is gonna go but from what I can see and tell, you need some sockets, metric, ratchet, 3/8 extension, needle nose pliers, a screwdriver, and of course, new brake shoes. Got these brake shoes off of, you know, I can't remember if I got them off of eBay or if I got them off of Amazon, but they were under 30 bucks. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, first thing I did is I put the bike up on the center stand. A lot of times uh, from a couple of the videos I was watching and a couple of the forums that I was reading, they say that um, it's better to suspend the whole bike up than to uh, work off of the center stand. But I feel the tire spins freely, so I'm thinking it should be okay. Uh, we'll find out worst comes to worst. I do have a jack and a little piece of 2x4 I can put it underneath the center of the motorcycle and try to push it up So let's just kind of tear into this and see where we can go guys. Also. I wanted to uh, preface this by saying uh, Please like please subscribe to this channel. Uh, please share it if you can I've noticed that over 95% of people who are watching my videos are not subscribed I'm trying to make this community grow and in order to do so, I need your help by doing that, okay? So please, feel free to like and subscribe. Click that notification bell so you'll know when I have new videos coming out, which so far have been at least every week. And feel free to share as well, okay? Enough of that advertisement stuff. Let's get into this and see what's going on. Okay, everybody, I want to apologize ahead of time. Uh, for one reason or another, my camera did not record one of the segments of the disassembly progress. Uh, what I did, I popped this cotter pin out right here, and when I ended up popping it out, it ended up busting. Uh, you basically just take a pair of needle nose pliers uh, and straighten out your cotter pin and then pull it from the top. Sometimes you can put a little screwdriver in there and kind of use this as a fulcrum to pull it out. Uh, mine was so old that it ended up breaking, so I put another one on, as you'll see at the end of this video. Then this castle nut spins off. I don't know exactly what size it was because I had to use a crescent wrench because none of my wrenches were big enough. Um, behind that, there is a washer. Once you get that out, you are pretty much done with this side for right now. So that is a segment that you ended up missing and I apologize ahead of time once again that it wasn't available, uh, but let's move on now. On the other side, we have a couple of things to look at here. Number one, we have to take this bolt out. We also have to unhook this threaded rod for the brake control and then hopefully the axle will slide out this way. So let's start with this. Okay this bolt is a 12 millimeter. Once again, there's a couple of washers. Just pay mind that they're there because you don't want them to slip off. And lastly, we're gonna need to get this off. So once again, that looks to be about a 12. Let's 
check and see. Yep, it is a 12. I always compress the spring, pull this out, put the nut right back on so you don't lose the spring, because you never know. Okay, we're gonna have another cotter pin down here. Let me move it down so you can see. Another cotter pin right here. This is to hold whatever this mount is. This one is a lot smaller, so it should be a lot easier to straighten out and get it out without it breaking. But we'll see. Yep, I was actually able to pull it out with my hand and put that aside. That looks like a 12 millimeter as well. Yep. So let's take that off. Make sure so you know there's a lock washer there. Put that aside. This should pull out and then drop. It's out of the way here, like that. Okay. So now we just need to get this axle out. Sometimes they push right through, and of course this one isn't. So we want to get the axle nut off. And you don't just want to take a hammer and start beating on it. You probably mess up the threads, which can do can put a piece of wood against it and then tap it with the hammer. As you can see, right there, it popped out. And you can even see that the brake hardware is coming out with it. There's a washer. So we want to pull this axle shaft all the way out. There we go. Like I said, there was that washer on it. Remember that washer went just on the face of the brake drum. Then, let me move you back over here. So now that you have this axle nut off, you're gonna wanna move the wheel this way because it's hooked up to the shaft drive by a spline and the spline meshes. So we wanna push it straight out that way to where it's off the spline and then it should just drop. Hopefully. You may have to wiggle it a little bit. You may have to tap on the tire a little bit. There we go. Now it's off the spline, and I can roll it straight back. Tight fit. Here is the brake drum. It just pulls off to release. Flip it upside down, and we can see what's going on here. Okay, so the back brake pad looks really good, or whichever side that is. I'm not sure if one's a back or one's a front. But this one, worn pretty much all the way down. So we're gonna have to take care of this. So here are the new pads. Right here. Go 
ahead and look. Open these up. Okay, so effectively they're going to go on like that. But we have to pop these springs off first. Gonna use a little bit of engine degreaser on this. Gonna wipe it out. Try to get some of the brake dust, and if there's any. Try to get some of the brake dust and if there's any little pieces of uh, brake shoe in here. Sometimes I'll break off. I want them out of there too, you know? So. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I like to clean it up a little bit just to let the next person who does the brakes on this bike know someone was in here. I don't know if they tried to clean it a little bit. Okay, so that should be good enough. one okay now what I always like to do too take the hammer and just tap just to make sure that they're seated in seems as if they're seated in this then hub goes back into there and we reverse the process. The axle with the nut, or not the nut, but the washer that goes on the drum side. Now what we have to do too, is we have to make sure that this spline is going to fit back into its socket, like that. And it should press in there. Might have to do some jiggling to get this axle back in. There we go. See how it went through when you tighten it, it should compress. 
So we're gonna take our washer, our axle nut, castle nut, whatever you wanna call it. Hold that all in place for now. I'm gonna tap the axle a little bit further in. go. I'm going to take our nut off. Like that. I'm going to see if we can't get this to a point to where it'll go in. Hopefully it will. Like that. There it goes. So now it dropped through. I'm gonna spin this on for right now. Won't worry about tightening it too hard right now because you won't really know where and when the brakes need to be set for right now. Now this needs to go on. And this member just kind of pushes up. Lock washer, nut, Twelve millimeter. Make sure it's nice and tight. Seems to be. Okay, so now we want to put this bolt in. And you want to make sure not to tighten this too tight. Just snug it, because these are kind of prone to break. Make sure you got the washer on it, which I do. Where are we at? Oh, we still got a ways to go. Now, before I tighten it up all the way, I think I'm going to tighten. I think I should maybe tighten the axle now. Yeah. Because this should be pushed in a little farther. I can see the mark. Let's see if I can't tap it in a little bit more. Let me see if I can't tap it in a little bit more. Right there. That's where it should be. Pretty close at least. Maybe a little bit more. Feels pretty good. Okay, so now tighten this up the rest of the way. Like I said, you don't crank this down. You don't want to snap it. Getting pretty close to being on the bottom. Yeah, we're bottoming out right now. I can feel it. So just something like that will be fine. Okay. Now we're going to go and tighten your main axle nut, your castle nut up. I'm using a crescent wrench because none of my wrenches are big enough. Now, right now I'm halfway between one of the castles. And when I took it off, if you remember, it was kind of hard to take off. So I'm gonna try to move it to the other castle part so I can fit a new cotter pin through. Pretty close. Even closer. A little bit more and I'll be dead on. There, oh. 
There we go. I'm dead on now. So now when I put the new cotter pin through that I get at the auto parts store, it should, uh, it'll go right through and connect. So I'm going to go ahead and take my 12 millimeter wrench, just spin it, spin this on here a few times. But I'd like to at least see, there's threads right here, and I'd like to at least see the threads. If I can get them to go through here, like that, to butt up. Look at that. Whew, tons better. So now the only thing that's left to do is to get a new cotter pin for that other side from an auto parts store where I might be able to take one off the other bikes and we should be good to go. All right, guys, so that's it for this episode. If you found this useful or helpful, please, I implore you to click that like, click that subscribe, click that notification bell. That way, when my new videos drop, you will be the first to know about it. Also, I got that merch store. Check the uh, link in the description where you can start buying some swag. I'm hoping maybe another week and I'll have brand new swag out there, which will be nice. Um, yeah, put in the comments. Let me know what I did what, right, what I did wrong, um, and what you may want to see in a future episode, okay? So until then, uh, I'm going to sign off and keep both wheels on the ground. Thanks. I just wanted to show you really quick that I did install the new cotter pin. Uh, don't mess around with your safety, guys. Install that cotter pin. Uh, you do not want that castle nut to spin out and that axle to work its way uh, loose while you're going 65, 70 mile an hour down the highway. I also wanted to show you that I put a cotter pin on the front axle of the 850 from the uh, brake work and tire work that I did on a previous episode. Once again, stay safe, guys, because I'd rather talk to you than about you.